Are you just starting Japanese and struggling with Anki? Feel like it's just not working out for you? Or maybe you're lost in a sea of settings, unsure which algorithm to use or whether switching will actually help. Wish your deck had useful furigana? Ever wondered why everyone warns against using the hard and easy buttons? You're in the right place. This video will cover everything you need to set up Anki properly for learning Japanese without the outdated advice that's still floating around. No guide lasts forever, but as of 2025, this is the most up-to-date way to use Anki for learning Japanese efficiently. A quick disclaimer before we start. First, sentence mining won't be covered here. That's coming in a separate video. Second, all resources I mentioned are in the video description below. And third, why use Anki? That's already well documented, so I'll focus on how to use it effectively instead. This guide is split into three parts. Check the chapters for easy navigation. Part 1, the basics, would cover fonts, installation decks and add-ons. Part 2, configuring the algorithm, would cover understanding and switching to FSRS. And part 3, the best practices, would cover how to use Anki effectively in your Japanese studies. With all that said, are you still trying to learn Japanese by using Chinese fonts without realizing it? Well, check by using the Moya Way link in the description. Chinese font? Here is how to fix it. On Windows 10, press Windows and I key together. Go to System and scroll down to Optional Features on bottom left. Click on Add Feature. Search for Japanese supplemental fonts. Select it on the left and click on Add button at the bottom left. Congratulations, you can now study Japanese with actual Japanese fonts. Let's make sure you're using the latest version of Anki. And yes, you definitely want to. Start your desktop Anki app. Go to Help on the upper left and click on About. Check your version. A format is year, month. The latest as of March 2025 is version 25.02. If yours is older, download the latest version using the link in the description. If you are a beginner, I highly recommend the Kaishi 1.5K deck. It includes words and sentences, images and native audio, and pitch accent notation. Download it from the description, then double-click the file to add it to Anki. To change the Kaishi 1.5K default deck to Frigana style, do the following. Import the Kaishi deck if you haven't already. Download the Kaishi Furigana file from the description below. It only has one card that you can delete after transferring the latest Kaishi 1.5k deck to Furigana card type. Import the Kaishi Furigana deck by double-clicking on the downloaded file. Click on Browse on the main Anki window. In the Browse window, look at the left sidebar. Go to No Types and click on the Kaishi 1.5k. Click on any card inside of the center pane and press Ctrl and A simultaneously on your keyboard to highlight all of the cards in the deck. With all of the notes selected, right-click on any of the note and go to Notes, Change Note Type. On a new window that pops up on the upper right, next to Save button, click on the drop-down menu and select Kaishi 1.5K Furigana. Click on Save and click on Confirm for full sync warning. Congratulations, your Kaishi 1.5K deck has been converted to hidden Furigana format. Now, hover over Kanji on PC or tap on mobile to reveal Furigana. Do you need add-ons? If you're just starting out, no. Anki works fine out of the box. But if you like more details to track your progress, here are two helpful ones. Study time stats which tracks your study time, and Review Heatmap, which shows review trends visually. To install, open Anki on desktop and click on Tools on the upper left, then go to Add-ons. Click on Get Add-ons on the upper right of the window. To add an add-on to Anki, you simply need to copy and paste an add-on code into the code part of the window and press OK. Restart Anki to apply the add-ons. Check out the video description for all of the codes. Now. Let's talk about the most important part of Anki, 
one that everyone needs to understand in order to configure it properly, the algorithm. The algorithm determines when Anki shows you words you're learning, and Anki has two of them. Super Memo 2, SM2 for short, that's the old default, in use since 1985, I kid you not. The second one is Free Spaced Repetition Scheduler, FSRS for short, the new and much smarter system. So why does this matter? Well, you see, Super Memo 2 is outdated and responsible for a lot of bad Anki advice online. Ever felt like your Anki reviews are never ending? That's because SM2 tends to create review hell by piling up old cards unnecessarily. This is why many people suggest only using the good and again buttons, because the hard and easy ratings in SM2 algorithm can make things worse. The good news? Well, FSRS is a game changer. It is likely to become the default algorithm soon. It adapts to your individually, making your reviews smoother and more efficient. It's like having a personal study coach. The only catch? It is more complex. But don't worry. You don't need to understand the details. Just turn it on and let it do its thing. If you want to know more about the algorithms, you can follow the link in the description to Anki Manual that goes into more details about both. How to switch to FSRS. Click the cogwheel next to your deck. For example, Kashi 1.5k deck or another deck you might have. Select Options. Toggle FSRS on. Congratulations, you're now using the best algorithm for flashcards. This change applies to all your decks automatically. But we are not done here yet. Next, under FSRS, go to Compute Minimum Recommended Retention. Set days to simulate to 3650 days, that's 10 years. Click on Compute and watch your computer melt for a minute. Once you get your number, for example 0.70, that would mean it's a 70% retention. So set your desired retention to 85% unless your minimum retention is already above 85%. Click Optimize, then OK. Finally, click on Save on the upper right. We're not finished with setting up the parameters yet, though. Let's set the daily limits first. Go to Maximum Reviews per Day and set it to 9999, that's 9999. You don't want a hard cap limiting your reviews every day. Go to New Cards per Day and set it to whatever you're comfortable with. Start with 10 new cards per day and adjust after two weeks. Two weeks is how long it takes to feel the full impact of the changes you make. Let's take care of lapses and leash cards. Leash threshold should be set to 8 and leash action should be suspend card. If you fail a card 8 times after it moves into long-term review, that's 1 plus months intervals, it gets tagged as a leash and is suspended. Hold up, but what if I really want to learn that word? I used to think exactly the same. I had words appearing every day in my reviews. Uh, the reality, though, if you can't remember a word after 8 plus attempts, your brain isn't ready yet. Instead of grinding endlessly, suspend it and check back in 3 to 6 months. Many leeches become much easier to learn later. Remember, learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Next, let's optimize review order. Under display order, set new slash review order to show after reviews. This ensures you always complete your reviews before adding new cards. Set intraday learning review order to show before reviews. This prioritizes yesterday's new cards before your regular reviews. Finally, set review sort order to descending retrievability. On busy days, this prioritizes cards least likely to be forgotten, making maintenance easier. If you don't see these options, you might be in an outdated version of Ankli, so follow the earlier steps to update. 
Now, Burying Related Cards option. Enable all options under that. Bury New, Review, Intraday Learning Siblings. This prevents related cards, forward reverse pairs, from showing up on the same day, making learning smoother. Next, disable Play Audio automatically. If you use Anki in public, you don't want sudden audio blasting through your speakers, do you? Finally, have a look at the Easy Days option. If you want lighter study days, tweak this setting. Be mindful that these settings are relative. So, if everything is set to minimum, nothing is. Your total study load stays the same. Once you've finished these changes, save your settings, as they only apply to this specific deck, not Anki wide. FSRS is enabled across Anki, but each deck needs manual optimization. Re-optimize FSRS once a month to keep everything running smoothly. This is probably the most important change I've made to my Anki configuration. On the main Anki screen, on the upper left, go to Tools, Preferences and click on the Review tab. Uncheck Show Next Review Time above Answer Buttons. Why? When I first started, I left the setting on and I kept second-guessing the algorithm. This card was hard, but do I really want to see it again tomorrow? Maybe I'll just mark it as good instead of hard? Yeah. This hurt my retention because I was choosing intervals based on time rather than how well I actually knew the word. Turning this off was one of the best decisions I made and my walk-up retention improved significantly as a result. Now that Anki is set up properly, let's move on to using it in the best way possible by diving into why we chose these settings and how to use Anki effectively for language learning. Fluency isn't a quick fix. It takes years, not months. And let's be real, the first year, it'll suck. Anyone promising otherwise is either selling something or chasing views. The real challenge is sticking with it long term without burning out. So let's make Anki work for us, not the other way around. Let's make effortless your mantra. With that in mind. Anki is like training wheels. It helps, but you won't get fluent without the real practice. No app, no workbook will do it, only daily immersion will. We use Anki to memorize vocabulary as effectively and efficiently as possible with our limited time. The less time we spend on Anki, the more we can immerse. That's why we're using the latest algorithm designed to adapt to you and count down on long-term reviews that's why 85% retention trumps 90% retention. Lower retention means fewer reviews, which equals more immersion time, something we definitely want. And that is why we optimize settings in the way we did, so that the reviews that are the most necessary appear first. But we also need to make sure we're using Anki correctly. So here's how I study the Kaishi 1.5k deck. Try reading the sentence and understanding the kanji. For kanji you can't read, hover over to reveal the furigana. Go to the back of the card, play the word and sentence audio and shadow both. Rate yourself based only on how well you understand the target word. It makes it easier when you're just starting out. While still using your active recall by trying to read kanji on the front of the card. Try not to spend more than 20 seconds per card. There are four rating buttons. Use them all. Again, if you couldn't recall the meaning of the word, Hard, if you got the meaning, but it was difficult and took time. Good, if you got the meaning correct. And easy, if you got both the meaning and reading correct and it felt too easy. Most importantly, don't use hard as a softer version of again. Hard means you got the meaning right. Not maybe you got it right. Not almost you got it right. You got it right, but you struggled with the recall. Anything else, you should use again instead. If you misused hard, you will accumulate a lot of words you don't know with too long of an interval before it's served to you again, leading to eventual increase in workload. Talking of, remember we said desired retention to 85%? So for every 100 reviews, we aim to forget 10 to 20 words. That is what we're aiming for. That is the target we set. And that is our goal. 
If you expect to get everything right and get disappointed every time you're wrong, you'll burn out fast. Aim for 10 to 20 wrong answers per 100 reviews. And you'll feel good hitting your targets. Perpetual dopamine rush with every success. Hell yeah. That's it. That's all the secret sauce I have for you. Got any Anki tips yourself? Share them in the comments. Above all else, remember, Anki is a crutch. Immersion is the road. Walk both and you'll get there. Want to know how I'd study Japanese if I was starting over after a year? Watch this next. Soreja, matane. Bye bye.